Thank everyone for coming out tonight. I know it's a snowstorm, so great attendance. Uh, thank you to Riff Raff Books for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you to USA for, for hosting this event. So I'm just going to do a brief five-minute introduction of myself and my organization and the book. And then I think we've got some questions prepared. And then also we'll take questions from the audience of this uh, discussion that works for all of you. So as a as Emma said, my name is Thomas Hanna. I am the research director at the Democracy Collaborative Base in Washington, D.C. We're an action-oriented think tank and an R&D lab for a more democratic economy. We were founded around 2000 at the University of Maryland, and we spun off to our own nonprofit around 2014. We also have an office in Cleveland, Ohio, because in the mid-2000s, we helped set up the Evergreen Cooperative Network in Cleveland. And that is currently a network of three worker-owned cooperatives, an industrial-scale laundry, a solar panel installation and weatherization cooperative, and one of the largest urban greenhouses in the United States. And they're networked together by a community-controlled corporation. And when the cooperatives are profitable, they kick up about 10% of their profits to the corporation, and this helps scale the model and see new cooperatives over time. It's loosely based on the Mondragon cooperatives in uh, the vast region of Spain. Just a few months ago, the laundry undertook a massive expansion when it took over the operations of a commercial, uh, multinational exploitative laundry. And we brought about 100 new workers into the cooperative on an expedited basis to worker ownership. And then just two days ago, it was announced, Evergreen announced that they're launching a new $5 million fund for employee ownership conversion. So essentially, it's an investment fund that will attempt to purchase businesses where the baby boomer owners are retiring, the so-called silver tsunami, and then turn those over to the workers. So the Evergreen, uh, the Cleveland model, the Evergreen model, has been an inspiration to many other communities around the United States and around the world, and we're currently working in many American cities and also in the UK, in Preston, England, uh, with where they've taken the Evergreen model and they've adapted it into the Preston model, and they've added in public banking, public energy company, and so on and so forth. And this has been really been lauded in the UK context as the municipal basis for Corbynomics, uh, the economics of the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn. So we've been advising the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonald, who's the Shadow Chancellor of the Exchequer, not only on community wealth building and local municipal economics, but also on democratic public ownership. So I've been working with John McDonald's office on what actually democratic public ownership would look like in a real context. And if anyone's been watching the news today, there seems very likely that there could be a general election very soon in the UK and potentially a Labour government, and a very radical Labour government, which would be very, very interesting. So as an organization, we do a lot of this on-the-ground work and this on-the-ground development, but we're also committed to the complete transformation of the United States economy and the world economy beyond our current form of corporate capitalism. So we've embarked on a number of different efforts to make this so, and one of them is the Next System Project, which was mentioned, and that we can go into a little bit more in depth later. So that leads me to the new book that I'm releasing this week here in the U.S. Um, I'm just going to very briefly discuss the three main theses of the book, and then we'll dive into the questions. So first and foremost, public ownership in the United States is much more prevalent and common and resilient than most people realize, and it's expanding in critically important areas. I was researching in 2015, and I kind of stumbled on the fact that in the state of Nebraska, which is a very politically conservative state, every single resident and business gets their electricity from a publicly owned utility or a cooperative, and I found that fascinating. And I decided to dive into the topic more deeply, and I wrote a paper, the paper turned into a report, the report turned into a book. The second thesis is that contrary to decades of neoliberal propaganda, there's never actually been a consensus in the empirical or the theoretical literature about whether or not public ownership is less efficient than private ownership. So in the book, I have a whole chapter where there's dozens and dozens of studies of very well-known academics, not people who are very friendly towards public ownership, going into their studies and saying, well, I was expecting to find that private ownership was going to be this much more efficient, and in fact, public ownership is as efficient or more efficient than private ownership. And the third thesis is that simply returning to the past top-down, bureaucratic, managerial forms of public ownership, the so-called state-owned enterprise, is insufficient from the perspective of trying to build a more sustainable, democratic, and equitable political economy. 